All right, our next speaker is Sunita Minan of the Frederick, Frederick National Laboratory for Cancer Institute. And she's talking about data management environment at the National Cancer Institute. All right. Thank you. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm so, um, like I was introduced, I'm Sunita F F FNL um, CR. And FNL CR is actually operated by Lidos Biomedical Research. Um, and uh, it is uh, it supports the National Cancer Institute and other ICs at the National Institute of Health. Um, so I'm the technical lead at the at, at the data management environment project. Um, thank you for this opportunity. I'm very excited to be here at this meeting. Um, I believe my colleagues Erin Rosenberg and Yuri Din are also present in the audience. Um, so. Um, I will first uh, begin my talk with a brief overview of uh, DME, why we developed the system, um, and uh, talk a little bit about the architecture, the logical and the physical architecture. And then we will dive into how we leveraged iroids um, to provide critical capabilities uh, to our users. So at NCI, um, there are uh, several labs and core facilities that uh, generate um, terabyte scale and uh, petabyte scale uh, data from high throughput instruments. So um, these instruments, um, uh, the data that comes out of these instruments, they um, make their way to the analysis platforms and frequently are shared with collaborators. So during this journey, um, uh, as we know, you know copies get made uh, uh, to secure this data. Um, but an interesting thing that we found when we um, worked with our users was that um, it's not just that these copies are made and they're sitting in different places. Um, over time, what happens is these copies diverge, and that's where you know was the biggest challenge. So these copies diverge. Some um, directories get merged. Some files get added. Some uh, data sets get reorganized uh, to align with analysis data and so on and so forth. So after a while, you have all these uh, data sitting, you don't know which is the original one, and there is no traceability. And um, nobody, you know, has the confidence to say that, hey, you know, delete this data, um, because it is, um, you know, it is something that was derived, and it's not the original data set. Um, so this is what this was a challenge um, that, you know, we started with. Um, um, and as we talked with you know more users, what we found was um, what is most important to them is the accessibility of the data. So they want the data to be always available, easily accessible. You know, it doesn't matter if they want to get it tomorrow, whether they need it, you know, six months down the line, but they want to have that accessibility. Um, and um, the second thing was, you know, they want to have control over that data. They want to be able to share it. Um, themselves and they, they don't want to go to the IT department and say, hey, you know what, can you please set the permissions, you know, there's a collaborator that I need to work with. So these are, uh, these are important uh, things that they were looking in the system. And we realized that if we wanted people uh, to uh, onboard onto what we provide, then we need to make, uh, you know, these features um, available to them. Um, so this is how, you know, with these inputs, we started the development and uh, DME is now a full fledged um, uh, production system to archive high value scientific data sets and um, iroids has enabled us to perform data management, secure data sharing and storage virtualization. And uh, these are very critical capabilities that has enabled um, adoption of uh, DME across uh, NCI and I'll, I'll talk more about that in my later slides. One of the challenges, of course, we faced um, in the beginning, and we continue to face um, every day um, while working with our users, is getting the metadata. Um, so, you know, everybody is ready to throw the data uh, over the wall, but nobody, you know, wants to put in the effort to annotate it with the metadata because it, it's a lot of work. So, um, we have. 
Um, so we work very closely with the users to help them. And we have defined templates and tools, you know, to make it easy for them. And we work closely um, with them to package the metadata and help them to upload it to uh, DMA. So DMA was piloted in uh, 20. Uh, 17 with uh, next generation sequencing data from CCR sequencing facility at NCI. Um, they were the only lab that was ready to risk their data with us. Um, so we and we have been collaborating very closely with them. And, you know, that uh, year 2017-18, we worked very closely to address several pain points. Um, you know, that helped us to go to the next level. Uh, and we um, set up the production level infrastructure in 2018. Um, Three-tier metadata structure was also defined with uh, input from the CBIT uh, federal leadership at NCI. Um, in 2019, we um, uh, commissioned um, the automated uh, archival workflow. So we developed and deployed that. Um, this was done um, because we had several users you know, who really wanted to onboard onto DME and they had terabytes of data you know, sitting in tier one storage that they needed to offload urgently, but they did not have the resources or the time to do that. Um, so that's how we came up with this um, um, workflow, which basically you know, enables users, it, it, we just schedule uh, the upload and it goes and scans their directories and does that. Um, in 2020, we added, expanded the archival support uh, to include cloud storage. We were only supporting um, on-premises S3 storage, and we expanded that. And we also expanded support for transfer endpoints to include um, cloud uh, endpoints, specifically AWS S3 and uh, Google Cloud. Um, in 2021, um, we had to undertake a major infrastructure expansion because the data increased um, so rapidly. Um, and so we prioritized that in 2021. Um, as of today, we have 23 research labs and cores um, leveraging DME, and um, over four petabyte of data has been secured uh, um, in the system so far. Um, so DME has uh, um, uh, um, three primary interfaces. I've added DME archival workflow also here, um, but that's unidirectional. It can perform uploads. Um, the other three um, interfaces, the web application command line utilities and um, the REST API suite um, allow users to perform all the um, uh, functionality they require. So the web application provides an interactive, interactive interface. Um, users can browse the data. They can um, um, search for data and they can download it and then um, group administrators can manage users and um, uh, perform administrative functions. Command line utilities enable integration with uh, bioinformatics pipelines. Um, they provide pro programmatic inter integration and REST API suite provides the most granular access. Um, and we have leveraged that to perform integration with uh, data analysis platform and um, you know, it's suitable for that kind of application and integration with third party um, user interfaces and applications. Um, with regards to transfer endpoints, I'd mentioned earlier, um, we support a host of transfer endpoints and we are always getting requests from users. And uh, the most latest um, request we have had is uh, support for box.com. Um, data stores, uh, we presently uh, host all our data in Cloudian. Uh, we were hosting it in Cleversave uh, uh, earlier, both are S3 object stores, and we switched over uh, to Cloudian because of cost considerations. So users have data sitting both in Cleversafe and Cloudian. Um, as of today, but uh, because of the virtualization, storage virtualization that we have been able to achieve with Cloudian, um, user, there is total transparency for the users and they really don't have to clear with, uh, you know, bother whether the data is in Cleversafe or um, in uh, Cloudian. 
so um, the architecture is a modular layered act architecture um, each uh, layer exports the the api and uh, hides the details of the implementation um, this choice has enabled us to perform debugging and maintenance um, um, very e easily um, physical art architecture it is uh, centos 7 based um, physical servers and combination of physical servers and virtual machines um, the DME web application is hosted on Tomcat 8. Um, the DME API servers, we have six of them. They uh, run on Apache Service Mix. And um, the IROID's uh, metadata is hosted on Oracle 19C. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, there's CleverSafe and Cloudiant Walls. And we have also recently been archiving a very uh, less frequently used um, data sets to S3 um, Glacier Deep uh, Archive. Um, so uh, all the data management um, functions that we perform, basically we, we, do, we do it through IROIDs. And so um, IROIDs has provided the virtual file hierarchy and enabled, like I mentioned earlier, complete storage uh, virtualization. And the IROIDs permission scheme has enabled us to perform secure collaboration. And that has been very much appreciated by our users. Um, you know, they are kind of amazed that, oh, can I go and just, you know, um, uh, um, just uh, permission, just this little collect, collect I mean, collection to this um, uh, collaborator. Um, and of course, data discovery, we, you know, we never get tired of reminding our users that, hey, the quality of the data, the searches that you have, how easily you are able to retrieve your data depends on the quality of the metadata um, that you provide to us. Um, so, uh, all the data management, all the data hierarchy and the metadata validation, um, everything is uh, performed through three policy files um, that forms like the heart and soul of um, our uh, you know, implementation. Um, so there's a uh, policy file for uh, validating the data hierarchy, defining and validating the data hierarchy, another for the collection metadata structure, what are the attributes that will go into the collection, and um, another one for the data object metadata structure to define what are the attributes that go into the uh, data object um, metadata uh, structure. So uh, these are some um, examples here. Um, as you can see, um, so the data hierarchy, these are JSON files. And so in the data hierarchy, JSON policy file, we say, okay, what are the sub collections that this collection type can have? And can it contain, you know, data objects or not? And um, collection metadata structure, we define all the attributes, what collection it belongs to. Um, and uh, uh, you know what uh, whether it's mandatory whether it's optional um, and so forth and same with the data object um, metadata validation uh, rules um, um, with regards to the metadata that we have we have multiple uh, cat levels of categorization the system metadata that we capture that dme captures automatically when an object is created so it's things like um, source size and uh, what time the transfer started when it completed um, and things like that and um, this is something that uh, we do not allow users to change and then there's user metadata that is provided by the user uh, completely and it is under their control. And within user metadata, you know, we have mandatory and optional metadata. The difference is only in that mandatory metadata is validated by the system during data res registration, whereas um, optional metadata is not. Um, uh, DME leverages um, um, IROID's permissions to uh, provide um, uh, uh, secure data access. So own permissions are granted automatically to the data generator. So who is uploading the data, they automatically get the own permissions and then they uh, 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 provide that perm the permissions, appropriate permissions to the data owner. And if there's a lab manager role to the lab manager. Um, researchers, um, uh, uh, are generally provided write permissions if they have to up 
uh, update metadata. Um, if they have to upload data, then they also get own permissions. And collaborators uh, are provided read permissions, and it enables them to browse uh, the data, search the data, and download the data. And the, the beauty of um, uh, the permission management uh, that IROITS provides is that um, uh, the researchers find it so easy to share data with collaborators because they just have to do two things. They just have to go and create a user account through DME. So provide an account for the uh, NIH collaborator. So DME does not support accounts for external collaborators. They have to create, just create an uh, account, which is very easy. And then then they have to just go and permission that collaborator um, for that data. And, and that's all they have to do. They do not have to move the data, anything. Then the collaborator can go uh, log into DME. They see whatever they have been provided access to, and then they can um, download it at that uh, at their convenience. So this is being used by several labs to kind of share data with uh, you know, core facility, especially, um, they find this capability very exciting. So they, you know, they just upload their data directly to DME as it comes off the instrument. And then they, you know, they hand it over to their clients through um, uh, DME. So their clients have accounts in DME, and then they just go and um, uh, um, up, up, download um, the data from there. Um, so uh, DMA also leverages uh, uh, the um, uh, IROID's roles uh, to determine what tasks can be performed. And uh, the system administrator role, uh, the group administrator role, and um, uh, the user roles are, uh, uh, are leveraged to perform various um, activities. Um, okay, so a storage virtualization, I mentioned uh, it a little earlier. Um, and um, I want to uh, you know, expand on this some more because this has been um, uh, so very critical for our users and so very critical for the uh, wide adoption of in, uh, DME that we have seen across MCI uh, because of two reasons. One is um, uh, users do not have to worry about the path of the file or the collection, where physically it is located. So they have scripts, they have bioinformatics pipelines that talk to you know to DME and they just see the virtual uh, path that IROID's present so they do not care today it is clever safe tomorrow the data may get migrated because of you know several reasons and it may go on to cloud and they do not have to worry about it um, and the first time when we did the switch over from clever safe to cloud and they were amazed when we told them that hey you know we are just going to do a system restart and nothing else has to happen so they were so worried over you know you're going to change the storage back end so this is going to be several weeks of discussion and we have to plan that and you know they, they were so very concerned and uh, but all that was done was we just uh, changed the configuration database configuration the back end and just restarted the system um so that was uh, you know a, a big um, um, win for them um, and data migration, another, um, it's, uh, we are doing a lot of data migration of late because we have to migrate uh, all the old data from Cleversafe to Cloudian uh, because Cleversafe has reached end of support. And uh, that again is transparent to the users. It does not impact them in any way. Um, data tiering, um, uh, it's the same thing, you know, move, we moved data, uh, we have started moving data, what is frequently um, not accessed at all to cold storage and um, there is no impact um, on the users. Um, so, um, uh, forward looking, um, we plan to continue infrastructure scale up and also uh, do architecture upgrades to further improve uh, performance. Um, we have been looking at uh, elastic search and other technologies uh, to be able to provide fast access um, and reporting capabilities. Um, in parallel, we continue to add the capabilities that our users um, ask of us and um, integration with the uh, analysis platforms is a big push uh, by the federal leadership at NCI. So that um, remains um, one of our um, top uh, priorities. Um, and uh, that's all I had. Um, thanks again for this opportunity. Um, I can take questions. All right. So, yeah.
So thank you, Sunita. Um, we're in, we're going to go ahead and move on with the next talk. But people can, if they have questions, you know, you can ask in the chat in the uh, Slack chat, and you can respond and answer those there, Sunita. Thanks. Yeah, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right.